Hi, uh, my name is Stuart McAwam. I'm a principal piccolo of the London Philharmonic Orchestra and I'm also a professor of piccolo at the Royal College of Music. Um, this morning I'm going to share some thoughts about um, purchasing a piccolo um, at whatever level you may be at. Most people don't don't start on the piccolo but if you're if you're a small person and you've got small hands and not very long reach actually it's 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 a good instrument to, to actually start on and um, it gets you into a very good um, mindset with, with, with an instrument that is often viewed with a bit of negativity by quite a lot of flute players. Um, they tend to try and <laughs> avoid it. Um, but the reality is, especially in this day and age now, you cannot avoid the piccolo if you want to be a successful flautist. Um, um, more and more um, orchestras particularly are looking for um, um, players regardless of what seat they're going to sit on that can can do everything so that means being very very capable on the piccolo as well so having a, a good relationship with it and feeling comfortable with it from an early stage is is very important i think going forward my piccolo journey um, started off with one of these which is um, a yamaha ypc 32. It's got a metal head and a plastic body and it's a very um, uh, cost-efficient way of, of owning a piccolo. I was very fortunate in that my father was a professional piccolo player so I had access to some instruments initially to get me interested and when it came to getting my own instrument this is what I ended up with and I played one of these from about the age of seven or eight up until I was about 14 or 15. Um, they work very well. Um, they're very functional. Uh, the mechanism is, is very reliable. Um, so, you know, there are, there are worse options to consider. Um, now we have the option of, uh, it's another plastic instrument, but um, it's actually much more responsive because it's, copy, it's a copy of what is um, uh, basically um, a Reiner piccolo, which is a very um, fine make of German instrument, um, which I have used for many years. I think if you, if you, if you invest in a pearl piccolo, you can actually go quite far with this before you probably feel that you need to upgrade. These actually are very consistent throughout the range so I think they're a really good option for, for somebody who's buying their first piccolo. I've actually played one of these in, in, the, in the London Phil you know and they, they work extremely well. Yeah I, I, think, I think this, I mean I can't believe how well these play it's, I mean, for the, for the money, it's, it's a bit of a bargain, I, I would say, you know. I mean, that's probably as easy as you're going to get on any any piccolo you know it's amazing so that can get you pretty far down the road and then um, you would be looking at what the options are for the top if you're um, if you're considering buying a piccolo whether you're just even pre pre-college or um, you've just got to music conservatory it really is about um, it's just about feel um, and you, you'll know when, when you pick an instrument up, you know, whether it suits you or not. Recently, uh, a lot of students of mine I know have gone down 
the Burkhart Road and um, I've been hugely impressed with some of the things that, that people have, have tried and ended up, ended up buying and playing extremely well um, on. Um, so much so that I've been tempted into going down that road myself, you know, recently. Um, so I ended up um, trying um, what is the Burkhart Elite model. I think there are three, three models now. Uh, there's the entry level, which is the Rizona, which, I mean, basically looks exactly the same, except I believe it's plated keywork as opposed to a solid silver mechanism. Sitting in between these two is the professional model, um, which personally I haven't tried. But certainly um, comparing the, the Rizona here plays fantastically well. Maybe it doesn't have the same same quality of sound as this piece of wood. Um, There's a bit more depth to it. I well, it certainly feels like that one when, when I blow it. Um, um, like 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 all these things, it's you know. I mean, I've spent a whole lifetime looking for the ultimate instrument. You know, that one piccolo that can do everything, but it doesn't actually really exist sadly yet. I mean, we live in hope that somebody might be able to make it, but it's about forming a relationship with a piccolo um, and just getting to know it's the scale. You know, I mean, even when you buy a top end piccolo, you're still going to have to, you can't just let it do its own thing. You know, um, you're probably going to have to adjust certain notes it seems like there are, there's always a compromise. You know, if you make a piccolo that's fantastic in one area, chances are it might not be so good in another area. But yeah, so I, um, you know, have invested in in this Burkhart Elite, and um, I'm still really getting to know it. But I'm extremely happy with it, and you know, I'm very very confident that this type of instrument will take most of the boxes for, for most people, you know, even if it's not the elite model, but the professional maybe. And if you're on a lower budget, you know, basically the Rizona is, 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 is the same beast. You know, it's responding in a very similar way. You know, if ever there was a piccolo that's sort of ticking most of the boxes, I mean, I know I said everybody's looking for the piccolo that can do everything. Um, this is as close as I think I've come to to finding it, you know. Um, so when when upgrading um, to maybe something of, um, of of the top end of what's available, um, it's always worth potentially considering um, a used instrument. Um, I suppose when one's paying sort of four or five thousand uh, pounds or upwards. Um, it's always nice to think that you might be buying something brand new, straight out of the box, you know, that's, that's, that's yours and has never been anybody else's. But um, there are a lot of, of very fine top end picklers that just aren't made anymore. Um, and obviously the Reiner is, is a classic example of that, of the German, German school. So you're never gonna find a brand new one of those now. So um, uh, there, there, there are there are many around, secondhand um, from time to time. If you can find a good one with with a head joint that suits you, they're 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 really a fantastic option.
So if you move away from the, the German school of, of pickle manufacture, there's the, the other biggest um, area would be um, the American firms. Um, uh, of, the, of the really good American makes that are no longer made, um, Roy Seaman was at one time very, very um, favoured. Um, when I first came to London, um, Keith Bragg in the Philharmonia Orchestra was playing Roy Seaman. Francis Nolan in the London Symphony Orchestra was playing Roy Seaman Piccolo. Um, and at that time, uh, you know, in the early 80s, they were like one of the top options. And this is the one, actually, this Piccolo actually belonged to, to, to Francis Nolan. Um, this is the one that he used in the NSO. This Piccolo was actually played by, by, by Frank on the first three Star Wars films at least, you know. So, um, you know, and it's on countless LSO recordings, you know, um, with, with him and all sorts of conductors like Andre Previn and all those famous LSO recordings. This was the piccolo that he was playing. Just to summarise then, um, basically, you know, there's, there, there's a lot of options out there, um, some of them more practical than others. Um, it's a bit of a minefield. And I think the most important thing for anybody, you know, considering investing in a top end piccolo is that you, you try as many things as possible. Hope that's been of some, some help um, in trying to navigate your way through um, the, the business of trying to, to end up with the right instrument for whoever you are. Um, um, I was very fortunate to give the premiere of a new piccolo concerto uh, by Conrad Asman a few weeks ago uh, in our debut sounds concert, which uh, will be available on YouTube now, I believe. If you search for um, debut sounds, um, and Conrad Asman, it should come up. A uh, very interesting, challenging piece, quite short. It's part of a concert of five mini concertos, one for double bass, one for violin, one for clarinet, uh, one for, uh, and one for piccolo. Um, so yeah, um, interesting piece, worth a listen. Um, and uh, yeah, good luck with your search. <laughs>